In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at what is typically the last stage in the software process, and that is to save out your toolpath data into a format which can be read by your CNC machine to cut the part. So to show you this, I'm going to open a file that we've created in a previous tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and open an existing file, and in the tutorials folders, we're going to go to open this, the widget 24x24 toolpath. So click that and then click open. And in that tutorial, we basically created one of these vectric widgets. And then what we did is we taken the vectors and then we put them and organized them onto different layers. So we organized them onto a cutout layer. So let's uh, quickly uncheck all these so you can see the vectors. And we did this for a reason, so that we could associate these vectors with the actual toolpaths that we then went on to create. So that was the cutout pass. Then we had the pockets. Then we had the text, which we plan on engraving. Then we had the drill toolpath. And then we had the crosshatch effect using a profile toolpath. And because of the way that we organized our vectors onto different layers and the way then we associated those vectors on spe those specific layers with a specific toolpath, it enabled us easily to then use the array copy tool to create multiples of this one vector widget and then all we had to do was recalculate toolpaths and all the toolpaths were created for each one of these vector widgets. So let's go over to the toolpaths tab by clicking this icon here and we can go ahead and preview the toolpaths that we created. So I'm just going to go into the preview toolpaths form and you can see here we created a pocket toolpath. So let's preview that. Then we created the text profile, which was sat inside the pocket of an eighth inch that we created. Then we had the hatched profile, like so. Then we had the drill, so to drill the holes. And then we had the profile cut out itself, like so. Now, before creating and saving out any toolpaths, we must be 100% sure that they were correct. So in the software, we would use the preview function like we just did to simulate the part when it is cut. The only th other thing that we need to ensure is that the tools used within the toolpaths are accurately represented in the tool database with regards to the accurate tool diameter, the speeds and feeds appropriate for the material you're going to machine. And only then, once we've took all those factors into consideration, should we really be considering to save out the toolpaths. Once we do feel confident, we can simply close the preview toolpath form and then we'd go and find this save toolpath icon, which you'll find at the bottom right here under the toolpath operations. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that. And this is the save toolpath form. Now the first options that are presented to us are a checkbox whether we want to output all visible toolpaths to one file. Now this basically will enable us to output more than one toolpath at a time to one file. And we'll go into that in just a moment. The other options are output tiled toolpath. Now this is only highlighted and allowed to be checked if we have used the tiled toolpath options. And the add side toolpath name is only applicable to double sided jobs. So since output all visible toolpaths to one file is unchecked, we can only select one of our many toolpaths to output at a time. So You'll notice that when I select the pocket down here, the toolpath to be saved has changed to pocket and it also states the tool that we're going to be using. If I choose text profile, you'll see that text profile is now listed there and it also tells us the V bit of 90 degrees and, and half an inch is the tool that's going to be used. And what we will do is once we've selected our toolpath to be post-processed, what we would do is we go down to this post-processor section here and we would use the drop down to find the post processor most appropriate to our machine. And you can navigate your way through the list by typing letters on a keyboard. So if I wanted to find all the post processors starting with A, I would type A and then I can simply just scroll down and in that section and see if I can find the one that's most appropriate for my machine. I'm going to select G code, so I'm just going to type the letter G, like so, and I'm going to choose the G code inch dot tap there like so and then what I would do once that's selected like so I would click to save toolpath and I would save this in the most appropriate area whether that be a specific folder or a memory stick where we can then later transport that onto the machine with the control software on there so to demonstrate saving a file it's always good to give the file uh, an appropriate name so I'm just going to call this pocket so I'm going to keep that 
and then I'm just going to put underscore 0 0.25 em, so that's a quarter inch end mill for that, and just press save like so. And if I go to press save again, you'll see in that same folder where it's just remembered from the last time I went to save a file, you'll find out the pocket underscore quarter inch end mill dot tap file is there, ready for me to put in my control software. So next we're going to take a look at outputting all visible toolpaths to one file and what this actually means. So let's go ahead and check that checkbox there like so. And the first thing you'll notice that it says toolpaths to be saved, no visible toolpaths. Now what this means by visible toolpaths is visible toolpaths in the 3D or 2D view. And how we actually check a toolpath on in visibility is you check the checkbox next to the toolpath name like so. And you'll notice as soon as I'm checking this checkbox, the toolpath name comes visible under the list of toolpaths to be saved. So let's go ahead and start adding some toolpaths. So I'm just going to put a checkbox in the pocket, and straight away you'll notice that there's an error underneath the toolpath to be saved. And it says the visible toolpaths use different tools, and the selected post processor does not support tool changing. So, what this means for us is that if we don't have a machine that supports a tool changer, we can still use the G-code post processor and we can still output visible toolpaths and more than one to a file, but we need to make sure that the tool geometry and the tool number is the same. So what basically that means if if I uncheck the pocket and I then check the hatch profile, like so, now because they both use a 90 degree V-bit of half an inch, they can both be saved out into one singular toolpath. So we could go ahead, save those out, give that an appropriate name, and then we could then go ahead and uncheck those, and then check the other three, because they use an end mill of a quarter inch, and then we could save those out as well. But there's definitely something that we do need to think about here, and that's the ordering of the toolpaths. Now, if we remember when we previewed the toolpaths, if I just go back into the preview toolpaths form, we pocketed out the material first, and then did the text profile afterwards. Now, if we run the V profile first, we're going to end up plunging the V bit tool into the top of the material as it's the actual toolpath itself starts at a quarter of an inch into the material. And if we would have run the end mill selection first, so the pocket, the drill, and the profile cutout pass, we would have cut out the part before finishing the actual part. And that's never a good idea, even if we do have a vacuum hold down system. So it's a good idea, even if we have the ability to save out more than one toolpath, to always be aware of the ordering. And that may limit us, if we don't have a tool changer, to how many toolpaths we can actually output into one singular file. Now if we do have a tool changer, all we need to do is find the most appropriate processor for our machine. So if I'm running G-code, I would simply just look for one that has ATC in the name which stands for Automatic Tool Changer. So all I'll do is simply select that one there, like so, and then I can start selecting my toolpaths, like so. And you'll notice that we've now got another error under the toolpaths to be saved. So it says Pocket and Text Profile both use tool number one, but the geometry of the tools are different. Now if we hover over the Pocket Profile, you'll see in there it says end mill of quarter inch and tool number one and if we hover over the text profile it says v bit 90 degree half an inch and tool number one now it's not complaining about the geometry of the tool being different whether that's an end mill or a v bit it's complaining that apparently tool number one in the tool changer is being allocated both an end mill and a v bit tool and obviously we can't have the two tools in the same slot so what we need to do, we need to obviously go and set up our tool changer and then we need to come back and allocate the V bit or the end mill, the right number relevant to the tool changer on the CNC machine. So what we'll do, let's go into the V bit profile toolpath and what we're going to do is we're going to come into the edit options of the tool like so. I'm just going to give that another number. So I'm going to assume that my vbit tool is in slot number two on my tool changer so I'm just going to change that to tool number two like so and I'm going to recalculate that toolpath and then I'm going to double click again under the hatch profile and I'm going to change this one again to tool number two and then recalculate that one and now 
we should find, if we go into the Save Toolpath form, that we should now be able to select them all in order like so. And then we can go ahead and click Save Toolpath. And when we've got multiple toolpaths selected like this, it will actually uh, set the file name as the file name for the project that we're currently working on. So as you can see, widget underscore 24 by 24 underscore toolpaths, like so. Then we can simply just go ahead and click Save, and then just close the toolpaths. And with that concludes this tutorial, so thank you very much for watching.